So, you've been recording your own band for a few years, and you just decided to take the next step in your audio production career. A band sends you files, and you are completely in over your head. I'm gonna show you how I manage a mix. Okay, first things first, I need to get my coffee. Isn't that lovely? Small cup, totally messed up. Ugh, needs more sugar. Like a lot. What do I do? Okay, this band is called Edward Glenn. Great guys. So typically when you get sent files from a band, you want them all in nice folders. So this is a 16 track album. We've got eight songs from one guy, eight songs from another. Communication is the biggest thing with mixing because I could go into this thinking they want the biggest badass production ever and go completely over the top when they could just want it to sound as real and earthy as possible. Neither one would have been bad, but it wouldn't have been what they wanted. And my job is to fuse what, basically what people want and what they want. Either way, so let's open a new, uh, new project. We're gonna mix this in two different sessions. Just because there's two different people, I wanna keep it consistent, but I don't want to have one mix influence the other in any way, but I'm mixing them at the same time, so that's gonna kinda keep it uh, cohesive, I guess. But, all right, so we are gonna make a new session. We're gonna make 64 tracks. We're gonna assign first one to bus one. We're gonna make them all go ascending. This way we're gonna create all of our oxes or buses in one go and they're all gonna be numbered sequentially and correctly. It will make sense later. No input monitoring device, audio engine D1, cool. We are good. Create instantly now. I'm gonna open this up. So all of my tracks are selected right there. I'm gonna hit X, X opens up the mixer and change the output back to one, two because I don't want them all going to sequential buses. I just want all of my buses there and active. So first things first, we need to figure out how these guys, well, let's name this. Edward Glenn Double Full Glenn. That sounds appropriate. I always make them all funny. I don't know why. All right, so let's start with, um, let's start with Isaiah's half. So basically I, knots and burls. What we're gonna do is just drag and drop. Oh, that didn't work. We're gonna drag and drop. We're gonna drag and drop. And we are gonna use existing tracks. How many tracks do we have? 20, yeah. <laughs> and we are gonna keep track format. That's key for right now. Cool. So now, first thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna make this session a hell of a lot longer for one, because I mix in the same session. Uh, Y'all might think I'm crazy, but I'm sorry. I have a low, medi low to medium end M1 MacBook Pro and it handles an hour long session with 400 tracks, fine. I ain't got time to like sit there switching tracks or switching songs, even loading presets. If I change a kick sound, I want that to be album wide until I tell it to not be album wide, not the other way around. I don't wanna spend an hour copying kick presets basically. But first thing we're gonna do is hit play and just see where everything's at, if this even works. tell this mix is gonna be fucking fire. Oh, I can't wait. I love this moment in the process where you really hear it for the first time. It makes you geek. I, I love music. So we're gonna go to the next song now that everything's there. My workflow with this is, um, these existing tracks again. Sample rate conversion, ooh. What happened there? Okay. This is good that this came up. So this happened. Something was not recorded the same. So we're going to figure that out. 96K, 44.1, 96K, 44.1, 96K, 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 96K. All right. So now I have a choice I need to make. Do I run the session in 96 and upsample the two or run it all in 44.1, which I have for 20 years and mix it that way? Um, all right, let's see what Ian's half is. Cause if Ian's half, okay, 96, 96. Just gonna ignore that for right now. 96. Okay. 
We're going 96. We're going 96. We're going. All right. He has one 44 one. Yeah. We're going 96 K on this session. Okay, cool. So start over. Undo. Uh, 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 uh. We are going to delete this because there's weird issues when you import the same file into logic twice. Um, sometimes it will reference the old file. So there's been times where I have recorded drums, comped everything how we want. I'll export it, edit in Reaper, because there's a Pro Tools workflow that mimics Beat Detective, and throw it back into Logic, and it can't, if they're named exactly the same, it won't update the files. It's it's a little strange. Take two, new session, do the same thing. Okay, so now we're gonna go into project settings. <laughs> Recording, should be over here. Audio, we're gonna change that to 96K sample rate. I think it should just reload for a second. Cool. So now we should be good to go in 96K. Let's go back to Isaiah's half. So now this should ask me to convert these files. Here's existing tracks. Convert file. So, I mean, there's nothing wrong with up converting files. It, I mean, it's a waste. It's a waste of processing power. It's a waste of space. There has been a uh, debate about like EQs and compressors having a little bit more resolute, blah, blah, blah having a little bit more resolution, I guess it moves the distortion frequency that, like all EQs distort. So it moves the frequency that they distort way higher into the inaudible range, like, you know, 40, 80, 60 kilohertz instead of something like 30, which is, I mean, we can only hear it into the, you know, high teens, low twenties, but we can hear harmonics that are up there very easily. And again, we're gonna keep track format. Let's verify that this plays correctly. <laughs> Cool. I'm looking right here at the duration um, versus in logic because if it was missampling and speeding it up when it did that conversion, you should always check to make sure it doesn't resample the song. Um, the times would be different. So we're just making sure it didn't speed anything up. So we're gonna go over to the top. I'm gonna open up my markers. And what the hell is the song called? Knots and Burls. And just like before, we're gonna drag this uh, session end point over quite a bit. It's open song two. So basically what I was saying before, after we're done importing all the songs, I'm gonna go through and this is where it like you need to, f it helps if you have a system. I typically have kick, all of my rooms for the kick, reverbs or auxiliary kicks, snare, toms, overheads, rooms, then I have vocals, bass, guitar, like I go down the session like that. And we're gonna arrange his tracks in the way that I want them to be arranged. He, oh, hi puppy, what's up? Hi, what do you need? Do you need something? This is Cricket, I think she wants to be in the video. Well, yeah, okay. Anyways, thank you. Thank you, we're gonna import some files. Yeah. So I'm gonna actually just name them later. Go through, thank you. Use existing tracks. Always use existing tracks. Thank you, Miss Cricket. So I guess I could take this moment to talk about mixing in the same session. Yeah, for years, people would get really weirded out at me that I'd be mixing in the same session. Like, wh what if you want songs to be different? But like, I use automation. I love how Logic put 07 acoustic, 01 main vo vox, 02, like it almost got the order right. Almost. Like, well, what about this one? Three, four, one, two, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. All right, so we're just gonna go through and name these real quick. I'm gonna put this over on my other screen so I don't have to keep going back and forth. Knots and burls. To be clear, when I name band songs in my session, I usually uh, make them hilarious, but for the sake of niceness, we'll uh, keep it PG. We're gonna save this as a package. We're gonna s copy all the audio files into said package, everything else looks good, safe. So we're gonna go through and we're just gonna make sure everything works. There's no errors. Does my dog have to go out? Yeah, she does. We're just gonna go make sure there's no errors, there's no glitchy sounds, that all the tracks actually line up. Sometimes I've gotten tracks where 
the kick drum will be half a second off. So when I bring it into my session, it's gonna, gonna you know, it's making flaming phasing sounds. Am I just holding So yeah, looks good. Looks like everything's there. So what we're gonna do now is start making our track order. I'm gonna go back to audio. We're gonna just work on drums. Let's say 12 tracks. And we do not want it ascending. And this is gonna be plus one drums. Of course, it doesn't do that correctly. So now all I'm gonna do is uh, go through and find all the drums. Bottom. Um, I like doing the toms next. Is there even a rack tom? Electric room, electric room, acoustic, acoustic, please, acoustic. Nope, no rack tom. Cool. And then we'll put this full, full kit mix down at the bottom. I don't even know. Yeah, I think it's just a mix. It's not um, like a room mic or anything like that. A one kick. Oh, double capital. So now as we move on, what we're gonna do, so this is a, a good example. We're gonna scroll up. Kick is correct, snare top is correct, snare bottom is correct, tom one is not correct. So what we're gonna do is actually just go like this and assume that this is gonna be, whoops, I should probably Do it like this. Oops. What is happening? So then for this track, what we're going to do is Tom one. Tom two, floor tom, highway life, same thing. So this only has tambourine. It's gonna go on its own track, full kit. snares in our bottom hi-hat go down here I should have an overhead still yep fiddle nothing in that track ooh so this one this good it can kind of get annoying it's I mean it's not the biggest deal but this one instead of having Stereo combined overheads has mono split overheads. So, I mean, it's not the big, biggest deal, but I'm just gonna make, I, I don't have time to convert things. I don't wanna mess things up. So I'm literally just making now overheads are three tracks, a stereo track and two mono tracks. We're gonna do the same for rooms. They're gonna go here. Oh, and by the way, also a good feature to have um, on in your settings is limit dragging in the range to one direction. That's how I can just grab these and like move them without really worrying about anything because they're either set to only go this way or this way. Back down to the rooms, overheads, kick, snare, snare bottom, 
Tom, Tom, Tom. Save. Awesome. We have drums done. Still with me? You might be thinking, oh man, that's a whole lot of work. Can't the band just uh, set it up right? No, they can't. They never can. We're gonna do vocals next. Backing vocals. Main vocals, here we are. Oh, it's a fart. Oh, it's another fart. So I'm gonna do vocals. I usually separate my um, buses. Drums are usually buses one through five. Um, sometimes I'll go higher up. Guitars are usually bus 10. Bass is usually bus nine or like right there. Leads are bus 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Bus 20 is where I start vocals. Um, that's just how I've always done stuff. You don't have to do it. You can route your output to output one, two. Doesn't matter. It's not gonna make or break your mix unless you're mixing the wrong way for your style. Um, okay, so we have three tracks of main vocals. We're gonna say BGV, BGV, background vocals, background vocals. Go back to song one and let's see what they have here. Four backing vocals. Oh, there's rooms here. Oh, electric, Never mind. I'm a silly person. Cool. So let's make two more backing vocal tracks. Let's start with that. There's four backing vocals. Specs, specs. I'm also incredibly dyslexic, so looking at lines and a whole lot of numbers and letters and is uh, kind of hard for me sometimes. Wait till I start putting plugins on. That's gonna be hilarious. I'll be like, well, I'm looking for L2. I'll be in the waves bundle folder for 10, 20, 30 seconds looking for it. Anyway, no backups there. So we're gonna put the, this has six now. So what we're gonna do is put the more used ones up top. And as they get less and less used, they're gonna go down to the bottom. So we're actually gonna go here. We're gonna select all of our vocals. Uh, I'm gonna open up that thingy, view our colors, and we're gonna make them green. Why? Because I feel like it. Why not? It's a nice color. Everything's dying. Summer's over. Might as well make it green. All right, next we're gonna go to the base. Output, let's do nine. This band, so I might just do output, base output to the two bus, but normally I'll have all my bass tracks. It'll be like a low end track, a DI track, the amp, like all sorts of things. And they'll all go to a bus, like, like I have bus nine here. But with some bands that's really not needed, we will see with them. But we'll just start with one track. Bass, bass, no bass there. Upright bass. So we're gonna call this up bass. Up bass, bass. How about that bass? All right, I'm not gonna say the word bass ever again. Cool, so now we have our that guitar track. Okay, so now we have these. I want to, these group vocals, I want to put them in a folder, but I think, I think I might just hide them. How many tracks are there? 20 tracks right there? Yeah, let's just do that. i make 20 tracks. I'll put two, we'll do 21, plus 21, because I want to be able to uh, um, adjust them separately. We're all gonna go there. We're gonna make a track stack, and it's gonna sum, uh, not just a folder. There we go. Surprise, safe, that's far and gracefully Big vocal, Vo <laughs> vocals. All right, now we have guitar. Oh boy, six tracks for guitar. Bus ten. Um, so this is only strictly gonna be electric guitar. Electric, especially when other people record it. It's not the easiest to work with sometimes. We'll just put it like that. I'm gonna make a track for stereo guitar because that I just realized that there's probably a bunch of those. Um, this up there. Normalize that. to pedal steel. Piano. Piano. Strings. Install that. Strings again. Keyboard, let's move that down. Pedal steel, where did I put pedal steel? 
String, string, strings, pedal steel. Keyboard, we'll put keyboard down here. Fiddle, we don't, we'll have a new track for that. Piano, bonfire, that's just random crap. This is gonna be cool, can't wait for this. Electric lead, cool. So that's about it. I'm gonna go through the other song and pretty much do the same thing, but in the next one, we're gonna start to mix this stuff. So stick around, like, and subscribe if that's the kind of thing that you wanna do, I guess. But we'll be making a lot of these, so stay tuned.